Right, Pete, so a question that, that I've had over the years, mm -hmm. um, especially selling cars, um, is with engines and direct injection and all that sort of stuff yep. and, and how it works. And, and to be quite honest, I really didn't have a clue. Well, the good news is, is that in our segment tonight on how things work, we're going to discuss direct injections, specifically looking at petrol engines. Yes. Diesels have had direct injection for a long time already, uh, so it's relatively new on on uh, petrol um, but yeah so it's it's going to be an interesting segment and i think important for people to understand the value proposition that yes. they're getting in their vehicles because this is this is spectacular technology no awesome. doubt about it all right guys so uh, let's get into how things work and this segment is uh, proudly brought to you with the support of suzuki south africa hello and welcome back to how things work and in this episode, we're going to take you through petrol direct injections. Now, before we get started, I wanted to share something interesting with you. So what is the similarity between this milk and the petrol direct injection engine? And of course, it comes down to the fact that both are homogenized. So what does that mean? If we look at milk in the past, it used to have cream that used to float to the top if we let it settle. The reason for that is that if we look at the milk under a microscope, we'll see that there's different size fat particles. And obviously the larger fat particles over time would float to the top in the form of our cream. These days we homogenize milk, which means that we pump the milk through. So these fat particles, large and small, get pumped through a very small valve. And this very small valve breaks up these fat particles into equal small sized particle fat cells. And because they're all equal in size and because they're very small, they emulsify beautifully into the milk. And that's why these days, although we have very creamy milk, we don't get cream that floats to the top. Now we do a very similar thing with our direct injection engines. So these two pictures on screen over here illustrate perfectly the difference between an older port injection engine where we can see the injector is part of the intake port. So this is where the air comes into the engine. We also mix that with fuel versus a direct injection engine where we separate the injection from the port over here. And that's why it's called direct injection. So we'll take you through some of the advantages of a, a direct injection engine. Now, I'm specific in terms of petrol direct injection engines. We'll talk on another episode about the fantastic diesel engines that we have, which have been direct injection for a long time. But it's taken us longer to get petrol to be direct injection. And the reason for that is that we've had to now wait for proper computing power and accuracy in our injectors to achieve proper direct injection or effective direct injection in our petrol engines. But we've got it now and the results are amazing. So what do we get with a direct injection engine? Well, first of all, as I said, we get homogenized fuel. So we break the fuel down into these small little particles that are of equal size. That's important because it means that our dispensing of the fuel is highly accurate. Because we've homogenized the fuel, we can now atomize the fuel through a high pressure nozzle over here into very small, accurately dispersed particles. So we can aim them very specifically to certain areas in our combustion chamber. The third thing we get is stratification. Now stratification means layered. And what we do with a direct injection engine is in fact we pulse in fuel multiple times in a diesel we can pulse as much as eight times during one stroke believe it or not with a petrol engine we don't quite get there but we get two pulses of fuel at the same time the first pulsing of fuel also assists in cooling down our combustion chamber which means that our combustion is more efficient we're not losing energy to heat we're converting chemical energy more effectively into mechanical energy. But the second thing we do when we create these two layers is we create two scenarios where the fuel is at two different temperatures. And now what happens is unlike with a port injection engine where we get one injection of fuel and air mix and therefore one combustion which starts to push down on the piston, there we immediately lose momentum on that piston. Whereas with these two layers of air fuel mixture, we effectively get two combustions. So a longer stroke of combustion, which means for the same amount of fuel, 
I'm actually getting a longer combustion. The fourth thing that we achieve with direct injection is laminar air intake. So once again, if I go back to my port injection concept over here, the airflow starts nice and clean and laminar. But unfortunately, by the time it starts to mix with the fuel, the airflow gets a bit turbulent. Whereas now, if I separate my air and fuel over here, I can retain my laminar airflow for longer. And once again, from an accuracy point of view, it's much more desirable to have laminar airflow. So now I've got a very accurate way of dispensing fuel and a very accurate way of delivering air. And that accuracy starts to give me better efficiency and better fuel consumption and better performance out of the motor. Now we know that the motor gives us better performance because of this layered concept and our double combustion effect that we create. But we also use less fuel. And one of the ways that we achieve this is because if we take the port injection concept for a droplet of fuel, let's say I take one milliliter of fuel, this droplet goes into my combustion chamber. If I measure the surface area of this droplet, I'll get to a specific figure. But with direct injection, because I'm homogenizing it and because I'm atomizing the fuel, I'm breaking up the same droplet of fuel into very, very small droplets of fuel. And if I now measure each of these individual surface areas of the fuel that I'm exposing to combustion, I actually get a bigger surface area. So now to get the same surface area that I would have had to use one milliliter of fuel for, I now use less than one milliliter of fuel to achieve the same combustion. And that's where we get our better fuel consumption. So all in all, a fantastic engine, a very modern engine that, that as I said earlier, requires a lot of computerization, a lot of modern materials to achieve the effect, but we've got it now. And the other thing that we know with a direct injection petrol engine is it starts to simulate the advantages that we get from a diesel engine. And in fact, some of the manufacturers are now working on direct injection engines that are sparkless. But that's for another day. So that's it. That's how petrol direct injection engines work in a nutshell. And be sure to join us on our next episode of How Things Work. And that, of course, is on Let's Talk Automotive. Geez, Peter, for you, you never cease to amaze me. So this, how's about this comment here from Brendan Carpenter? He says, Got milk, very cool comparison. Never thought I'd learn so much about milk and direct injection turbocharged engines on a car show. Thanks, guys. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Brendan. Um, yeah, we always try and keep it interesting. Eh? All right, guys, that segment, that segment was brought to you with the support of Suzuki South Africa. Thank you very much, guys.